Hi guys, do you hear me? Excellent, excellent. Uh, yeah, I was going to make a talk about some hardcore part of all scenes, uh, things with uh, reversing social media mechanisms, uh, stuff and so on. Then I have thoughts that uh, it uh, will be an all scene village track in hacker conference. So they will have a, a lot of technical stuff. So you should do something more entertaining, maybe. So I, uh, to be honest, uh, removed some very technical stuff, but uh, I uh, still placed something interesting in the end. Uh, I hope you will like it, but uh, remember that I tried to do it uh, more uh, interesting and funny than technical. Thank you. I hope you will like it. So, uh, standard disclaimer, I should not uh, say all the stuff about it, so it's all for the informational purposes and so on and so on. Okay, so who am I? I'm uh, founder of Allsynt Mindset Community from Russia. Uh, we have uh, 15,000 subscribers in the Telegram channel. Uh, around uh, 4,000 members of our investigation forum. Uh, we have around uh, 300 uh, active members of the forum and uh, uh, we had more than uh, 30 speakers from different domain fields uh, linked in some way with OSINT. And I personally created two OSINT educational courses uh, and now I'm a head of OSINT Center of Excellence in company Social Links. Uh, my department is uh, responsible for the investigations, trainings, and for some kind of insights about uh, how to do our automation of investigations and all the all scene stuff better. Also, I'm co-organizer of DevCon Group 7495, uh, speaker and cybersecurity enthusiast in general. Uh, I'm a developer of Megre. Thank you, Sylvain. And other tools, also I had some articles, guides about all things. I was born in Ukraine and mostly lived in Russia, but moved in Netherlands. Uh, but the main thing about me that I love investigate and build tools to make it easier. That's why I'm here. Uh, I want to tell you about the challenge. The, the challenge that we have uh, dozens of huge social platforms in the world and uh, there are billions users there. But we want to get information about some of the accounts uh, for our investigation and research in a couple of clicks. And how to do it? Uh, so I will answer to this question. Uh, I have a very simple solution, IDORS. Maybe you know uh, the common weaknesses enumeration and uh, some concept of insecure direct object reference. So when social media just uh, was beginning uh, and uh, we had something like ICQ with a numeric incremental IDs of accounts, it was very easy uh, to enumerate all the accounts and gather all the information about uh, any people registered in this uh, platform. And we still have such ability in Facebook, for example, if you will do very simple CURL request to Facebook slash for, you will get a uh, um, redirect to location facebook.com slash Zook, uh, which is account of Super Zuckerberg. So what can we do with uh, our challenge? Uh, we can just create a database with uh, accounts data and scrape this data, make search indexes, and is it all or not? Maybe some social media platforms uh, have some protection against these uh, scraping methods. Uh, yes, I think yes. And let's try to understand what the mechanisms they have to protect and what the, uh, I don't know, features they have uh, useful for us. So uh, I made a very um, small uh, table with a common uh, social media like Facebook, like VK, Russian analog of Facebook. And um, before I try to understand basically uh, what entities uh, do they have and 
about Twitter, Telegram, uh, TikTok, LinkedIn, Reddit. We usually can say only that they have some usernames. About WhatsApp, we can say that they have a phone number only. Uh, about uh, YouTube, we can say that each channel um, um, has username, but usually by default they have uh, some random uh, and very long IDs. But uh, does it mean that uh, uh, all the social media platforms is protected against scrapping and enumeration of users? I'm afraid not. Let's start from WhatsApp. So uh, if you will ask me uh, what IDs WhatsApp has, I will answer you phone numbers. Uh, they are using phone numbers internally for uh, all the uh, requests. API requests and uh, API calls internally, and they're using some notation like a phone number at c.us for the contact. And uh, some guys who did great job uh, earlier and uh, reversed uh, WhatsApp web client, uh, they got uh, some functions and even extensions for browser uh, and even Node.js library that allows to automate some things. Uh, and to send, for example, a uh, hundred of messages for every phone number or even get uh, profile pictures for a certain um, list of phone numbers in WhatsApp and their names and so on. So you can just Google uh, and uh, or search in GitHub for some results of uh, ready to use reverse engineering repositories uh, or um, simply to Google some tools like Epify and uh, chat API to get a ready to use interface to get information about uh, WhatsApp accounts by phone number like identifier only. Okay, let's take a look at Instagram. And uh, here we also have uh, some results, ready results of uh, reverse engineering work. And uh, you can Google it. I um, decide. Uh, decided not, not to put the name of this repository because it was removed by DMCA initially uh, from GitHub, uh, but you still can find it. And uh, internally, uh, Instagram um, uses a user PK entity. And if we will try to understand, to check some handlers uh, and to make requests, we will understand that it's uh, also numeric and incremental in the beginning, at least, incremental ID. Uh, more to say, if we will uh, do the requests with a um, URL with a template like in the screen, uh, we will get a redirect to username like in Facebook. Uh, of course, you should use some uh, session ID, so sock puppets account, you should use proper user agent, but it's not a technical question. It's more about your time, your resources, your investments, and so on. So if you are interested in enumeration of all the users in Instagram, you can do it. Let's move further. Uh, Twitter. So uh, you can see here a part of JSON response uh, to the request that uh, is sent in while you are opening uh, a page in your desktop. And we see ID, base 64 something and rest ID. And uh, ID uh, literally containing uh, base 64 encoded rest ID and rest ID is a numeric ID. Uh, in the beginning, they also uh, used incremental one uh, and they also provide some redirect service for us all centers to get a username and all the details by the identifier. If you will uh, uh, check what is what is the, uh, the, the number uh, of these accounts? You will understand that probably Twitter don't have so many accounts. And uh, this, it, it's true. In the beginning, they uh, had uh, incremental identifiers, but they decided to make uh, them unpredictable sometime. And uh, it's uh, mm, something difficult for us to enumerate all the new account of the new ones, but it's very easy to get uh, the oldest and to provide checking for uh, IDs existing. Um, it will take a long time, but not for the first users. Telegram, it's uh, something more interesting for us because it's a secure, uh, private at least, 
and secure, as uh, Pavel Durov said, uh, social media platform. Uh, they have a user ID entity that is hidden almost everywhere in clients, uh, but easily accessible through API, especially in some bots, and even visible in web clients version. What the reason of uh, that they have such an ID? Maybe you don't know about it, but Telegram is built uh, over a um, uh, Kitten PHP engine. And it was a decision uh, of uh, Pavel and his brother uh, Nikolai, where they leave VK and decided to build uh, Telegram Messenger, and they open sourced uh, the uh, the main part of of sources of VK to reuse it. And of course, internally, Telegram have the same mechanisms had at least uh, the same mechanisms uh, as VK. So. Um, you can put some user ID in the URL of address uh, that is uh, opening uh, some dialogue. And where is your privacy, Pavel? Um, he has some. Uh, but why? Uh, Telegram have, has some uh, entity uh, named access hash. And you cannot get access to user's account info by ID only. You should pass access hash, and uh, in the SDKs, official uh, Telegram SDKs and uh, unofficial libraries also, uh, you should uh, pass this uh, value as a something additional to get information about account. But how to get this random number? You can see in the slide that I tried to uh, get information about some user, and I got uh, his ID uh, and two different access hashes from two different users. So it's something unique for every user. Um, you cannot um, predict this ID. It's something really random, but you can get it when you will meet uh, another contact. So you should, uh, before uh, search it, through general search maybe, to uh, get it uh, maybe in some dialogues, groups, so on. And then uh, you will get this value. And Telegram will know that you have met this uh, contact. And since this moment, you can get uh, all the additional information about them and even open the uh, dialogues. And in this example, uh, if you will try to uh, put some identifier that you know belonging to some user, but you didn't met him before in Telegram, uh, you won't get something at all. So, uh, cool story about scammers. Uh, I put some tip for me. Yeah, uh, I remembered. Uh, so, uh, with this feature, I even realized uh, maybe oh, seven years ago, uh, some cool anti-fraud system for tracking of uh, Nigerian scammers. So they, in, in this time, they uh, decided to scam uh, ICO participants in Telegram, and they constantly changed uh, their usernames, last first names, uh, their avatars, uh, trying to, um, um, to, to pretend to be CEOs of different ICOs and so on, and they are uh, uh, telling uh, the participants that they have a very special offer and you should send your uh, crypto to exactly this address and then you will get a special bonus. Uh, and um, we won't be able and in that time to remove all their accounts, but we um, were, were able to track the decisions of uh, these scammers uh, what what ICO uh, did they choose? We saw this in our system because uh, we uh, saved all their IDs, and then uh, with some period we uh, were getting um, their actual usernames, actual avatars, and we saw uh, who, who who will be next. And uh, we of course went to these people from these ICOs and said to them, uh, okay guys. Um, let's help you. And uh, one more thing that I decided to add. 
Um, it's not our main topic, but it's something interesting that uh, before 2017, uh, Telegram had uh, some privacy issue with the uh, join links. Join links is something like uh, uh, you can uh, click it and join to some group, some channel, and um, today uh, they have a very, uh, very anonymous links that don't allow to get some additional information about chat, about channel, but before they had an um, encoded ID of a guy who created this link. So probably it's the owner of group, probably it's administrator, but not a usual member because this uh, ability was, was also available for uh, uh, guys with uh, administrator rights. So it was possible to uh, understand who created the link and de-anonymize the owner of a channel, for example. And uh, we could use it vice versa. So we could search other links created by this person. If we have uh, his ID, we can just uh, encode it, uh, put it into some Google Doc like uh, in URL, join chat, and this encoded ID. And uh, this way we can search all his links. And I even prepared some cyber chief receipts if you uh, want to play with uh, these mechanisms. Oh, sorry, I will drink water. Okay, let's move to something more interesting. So YouTube, we have a very long IDs, 24 character. Why do they need so long and ugly IDs? What do you think? We'll try to answer this question, uh, but the basic answer is user-generated content everywhere. Of course, all the social media platforms are very interested in your content, in what you will do, what you will provide, what you will generate, because it's a fuel, it's a blood for the social media. And uh, they're expecting that you will generate a lot of content. And if we are talking about not uh, something uh, very, very small uh, social media platforms, elite ones maybe, uh, they uh, can expect a lot of accounts and a lot of channels, for example. And, um, but, but how to understand what's uh, underlying? Um, some time ago, maybe four years ago, if you uh, open a YouTube channel page, you uh, could uh, find uh, some interesting link to a plus Google account. So you can see some numeric ID here. You understand it? Yeah. What, what is it? Uh, if you will try to open it, uh, now you will get probably a message that Google suspended uh, the, the maintaining of uh, Google Plus. Google Plus was a very interesting uh, social media platform. Uh, by the way, please, uh, who used Google Plus? One person? Two? Really? Wonderful. Uh, uh, now they're working only for the enterprise clients, if I'm not mistaken, uh, but uh, I think they will disable it for enterprise also. Uh, but you can search for some examples of Google Plus account in web archive.org. And in this place, you can see the data uh, that uh, we're able to get and even the lists of uh, such uh, Google IDs. Let's, let's name it Google ID. And uh, these IDs are something very useful, something very common in different Google products. Uh, you know, Google has uh, a lot of different services, and in some of these services, we even uh, can find something like a vulnerability, maybe bug, not, this is a feature. And uh, the most important and the most maybe famous one is a feature that uh, allows to get um, additional secondary email address uh, linked to the your Gmail address and the Google ID for your uh, Gmail. So uh, it's something not very useful for our purpose how to enumerate all the users starting from ID. But we can make a reverse map of uh, noun for us Gmail addresses and these uh, unique numeric addresses. And um, 
<laughs> yes, you, you can follow the link and even uh, read a small thread about how uh, security researchers tried to help Google to close it, but uh, we still have this method working for now, if I'm not wrong. I'm not wrong. Uh, okay, so um, what we can do with uh, different Google services and uh, hidden endpoints uh, that uh, allows us to get some additional information. Guys from all Synth Industries uh, doing very great job uh, with uh, researching of interesting endpoints. And this week uh, I saw the ability in Asynth Industries to get a YouTube channel by Gmail account. It's very great and I think uh, in the future we will find, they will find, a lot of uh, very useful stuff. Uh, to build some some maps, uh, I tried to make a logic schema uh, how to get uh, one uh, data by another, uh, and um, um, by this schema I can make a conclusion that there is no uh, clear way now how to enumerate all the YouTube uh, channels, how to get all the list of YouTube channels starting from uh, Google ID, G A I A ID. Uh, so, yes, Google did a very good job and they patched, I think, a lot of uh, methods uh, that uh, could be used in, in some evil um, stuff and so on. Um, but but uh, they still have, I think, some uh, holes, some security breaches that allows to use their logic. And the question is, Maybe social media platforms uh, have some uh, general and very great mechanisms how to protect data of their users. And uh, what if all identifiers will be hidden from our scrapping? So yeah, meet public ID. Uh, what is public ID? It's a um, concept. Uh, when we have a, a lot of services, Google, for example, had a lot of services, some of them uh, were developed internally, some were bought uh, from some other companies, and of course they should use some um, um, unique accounts to uh, give you access to these services. And of course they have their own account service, you can see in the left part of the screen. So you probably, they probably, uh, should have something like a login, for example, Gmail address, uh, some um, unique identifier. Uh, we can think that it's Google ID, but it could be something different. And uh, some public ID and some public name. In this case, public ID uh, will be like a ID for YouTube channels. I will show you further how uh, it's uh, looking for, uh, um, for another social media platforms. And uh, what's going on when we want to display some information in these services about users? Uh, we can use UID, so unique identifier, but we won't use it. We will use only public ID for the URLs and we will use public name for uh, just printing uh, last first name. And of course we can use login, but it's also not a good practice. We should use it only in the places when you should uh, uh, authorize, uh, when you should register and so on. So uh, for all the uh, observators, for all the scrapers and all synth researchers, uh, available only public ID and public name. So in fact, usernames in many social media, uh, it's a public ID. I hope so, I didn't see the source code, but I hope. But uh, what the reason uh, for uh, using this public ID? Uh, sorry, I will drink water again. <laughs> Let's take a look at the segment of classifieds. Um, it's a kind of platforms where user-generated content is uh, something very important and something very valuable because uh, uh, it's providing all the money, all the money between people, all the money for the company and so on. And of course, it's very interesting thing for uh, scammers and fraudsters. And after the beginning of COVID, 
many people decided to uh, use it for um, their, their purposes and uh, they started to do some scam things like uh, uh, scrape a lot of accounts and then prioritize them by the criteria uh, do they sell in for example very expensive uh, hand clocks or not and then uh, the schema is to write to some of these people in classified and ask them to to, uh, to sell it uh, or to go to the link and link will lead to some uh, uh, fake site uh, for the delivery or something like that and it's a really very big problem and uh, a lot of money was lost because of these scammers and uh, what classifieds did with it they decided to use public ids instead of numeric ids uh, and uh, even close the access to public profiles of the uh, big part of users and in this screen you can see uh, the example of the link for the profile account with a very long user ID and with a with a caption that user uh, ID is uh, ads user ads are hidden and so on and uh, it uh, was very helpful uh, but uh, scammers um, started to gather mappings of internal IDs and public IDs maybe before they call it and maybe they have a uh, uh, even thousands, uh, thousands of thousands uh, uh, of uh, mappings with the phone numbers and they can only get public ID and then uh, make a request to the database and uh, uh, see that, okay, so this guy have this phone number so I can continue to talk with them not in the classified but in the some uh, messenger like WhatsApp and then send a link to a phishing site in WhatsApp. And what to do with it? Of course, classifieds uh, building uh, their systems uh, for using public IDs with a very uh, special ability to change all the public IDs at the moment. So if they will understand that uh, bad guys uh, have maybe uh, mappings of phone numbers and IDs for mostly all the users, uh, they will uh, change some secret inside the code and uh, it will uh, generate all new public IDs for all the users. Let's take a look at the Yandex. Do you know what is Yandex? Great, great, <laughs> not two persons only. Uh, and uh, they have a lot of services, very great by the way, and uh, they have links to profiles with uh, exactly something like public ID. Uh, you see and um, I'm a part of group how to find uh, Russian OSINT guys and maybe several years ago uh, we started to search ways how to get uh, some identifier by another in some services and how to build a map for getting uh, one account from another account and in the beginning, as you see, it was very easy to get public ID, but by owner ID. Owner ID is the numeric incremental ID, as we discussed, and uh, it was very easy. And I even made a talk about it. You can open it with this QR code. Um, but further, of course, uh, Yandex developers and security guys, uh, they saw that uh, uh, someone exploiting the mechanisms and they uh, started to make uh, some uh, security things to protect uh, but we still uh, found some some places some additional services how to get this information and in the end uh, we saw that uh, all the places with the uh, mm, owner id incremental id uh, were removed and for now, it's very difficult to get public ID uh, by um, some numeric ID. Uh, and, but they still have some different platforms with uh, unique messengers for them, like a uh, Yandex Messenger, like uh, another one, I forgot to add it here. And uh, I tried some time ago to make something, some, something like a G-Hunt for Yandex, but uh, uh, for Yandex, <laughs> yeah, seeker, I called it, and uh, you can just Google it and uh, try how to get uh, additional information about Yandex account if you have only login 
uh, or only public ID. Uh, but the main question is even we have now um, API how to convert um, a numeric ID to public ID. Maybe we can understand the algorithm that allows us to do it without any HTTP requests. And then we can make a very huge, great, uh, comprehensive database with the mappings. So uh, I will show you some results of my research of what is underlying. Uh, so we have a, a Yandex public ID. It's a string with a, a 60, uh, sorry, 26 uh, characters, uh, base, 32 like uh, with uh, some binary data inside. So it's not something uh, just uh, um, maybe converted from, uh, from number. Uh, but uh, when I tried to search the source of this public ID, I found that you can change it to user limit. So it's uh, like a, a sign that my uh, theory and uh, my conclusions about public ID mechanisms was right and it's something automatically generated by your uh, user ID that uh, initially was given to you by a system but you can change it to something other. Uh, okay, let's dive into some technical part. Um, usually um, public ID is generating by actual user ID. And uh, it have, uh, in the beginning, some unique numeric identifier, of course, but also some version. What is version is uh, something that uh, allows to change the logic for generation of ID further uh, if, uh, if, they, if they need some such a possibility. And uh, of course, we should uh, concatenate these two fields with uh, some checksum, with uh, some cache, just to prove that uh, it's uh, really uh, generated by Yandex data. So, and then we should encrypt it. It's also a code resulting from my researches and experimentations. Uh, let's take a look what we see here. We see uh, the key. The key is usually something very strong, uh, maybe uh, around 30 bytes even. Uh, and maybe um, uh, the system that is using a key for uh, uh, encryption of number of IDs uh, have some keys, not the one. And uh, it, it has some logic for uh, iterating over these keys uh, just to make it more difficult to you to reverse the logic and to restore the original key for uh, all the public IDs uh, for uh, all the accounts. Uh, of course, we are making some ciphertext with a converting uh, to binary data and we do some basic encryption, usually something symmetric, as you understood, I hope, uh, and something in mod ECB because it's something commonly used. Of course, we are comparing uh, checksum to uh, in the end of the encryption to check that uh, it was really something generated by Yandex, as I said. And in the end of such a method of decryption, we are getting uh, UID, uh, unique identifier, numeric incremental, yes, and a version to use it for some additional logic. So what the conclusion we can make from all this stuff and all these um, results of researchers that uh, good enough identifiers are encrypted ones. And even if we have the source code for the decryption, we still cannot decrypt because uh, good developers and uh, I hope secure uh, guys uh, security guys, uh, they are splitting the data and source code and they are storing them in different places and even you have a source code, you cannot decrypt it uh, too easily. And uh, mm, of course, if you have only keys, you cannot understand uh, what methods for a decryption you should use and uh, what the maybe shiftings uh, you should use for getting parts uh, for splitting parts of this data to UID, version ID, and so on. Okay, so it was the end of 
technical part. And uh, I had some other social media to uh, uh, research and I conducted a very brief research and got that Discord uh, has uh, usernames uh, without discriminators even recently, if you don't know. Uh, and they have uh, uh, 18 digit IDs and they have a, a very um, easy method how to get uh, usernames from user IDs. TikTok also has usernames, but they also has a, a sec UEs. It's something like a mechanism used by Telegram. LinkedIn uh, has a changeable public IDs and non-readable URN IDs. It's something kind of legacy stuff from Microsoft, maybe, maybe not. Uh, but there is uh, an official IP, uh, API to resolve it. Pinterest uh, has usernames and numeric IDs for usual accounts and ads accounts. And I think that they have uh, some API methods to uh, get additional information for ads at least, uh, but I didn't do a great research there. Um, and Reddit uh, has usernames and base36 uh, encoded numeric IDs. Uh, and uh, I'm afraid in case of Reddit, we have no very clear method how to enumerate all the users. So, some conclusions and the third case when I'm drinking. So, if you want to protect your user's data, if you are a developer of some social media platform, if you're going to make one for you, for your friends, please be careful with APIs. Uh, don't use incremental IDs, of course. Uh, use proxy IDs instead of numeric and fonts and do authorization checks. And anyway, you should do monitoring and alerting for a big amount of similar requests to your endpoints. Uh, you should use rate limiting and captures to protect the data and prevent mass exploitation, not to close all the things because it uh, could, um, mm, could take a lot of resources. Uh, you go only to prevent mass exploitation in this case. And proposals to OSINT researches. So how to find such abilities? Uh, use uh, ready reverse engineering results. Um, to be honest, it's uh, very easily to Google some uh, stuff, how to work with IDs in some social media and so on. Uh, but if you want to do it manually, you can just follow the social interactions in social media. Just uh, things like uh, add a bookmark, uh, uh, add to friend someone, uh, maybe share some content with someone and check some user generated content handlers. So if you have some content and uh, there is a, some label of owner, of author of this content, probably you will find uh, some API how to use it, how to convert uh, one uh, data type to another. But if you, fi if you found, uh, report this, uh, report it as a uh, vulnerability. And if it's only informative, then put it in your arsenal and create tool to automate its use. But of course, the use of such things is uh, unethical, most, uh, most likely illegal and so on and so on. So basically it's all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Saksai. It was very, very, very interesting. Uh, we have time for some questions, so please raise your hand if you have questions. Yep, I'm coming. Please uh, keep silent, please. There, there is still questions. Thank you. Yep. All right, so hi there. <laughs> please, please. Please make less noise. Thank you very much. So first of all, thank you. That was interesting. I enjoyed it. Yeah, you I'll wait for you uh, to be done. Oh, well. <laughs> for sure I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> Good. Uh, well, I'm a penetration tester. And what I found uh, most interesting is how did you uh, reverse engineer that uh, ID? Because, well, it would be my position to tell developers like, hey, make your IDs better and, and 
make them unguessable. Uh, but personally, I do experience uh, difficulty determining just how good exactly the IDs is. Can you explain a bit more about the process that you went through to determine how these uh, Yandex uh, IDs were generated, were created? Um, I just woke up one morning and I understood how it's working. Uh, <laughs> I can tell you more, maybe, after the talk. There is another question? Yes, no? Oh, where? Yep. Thank you, Soksoy, for the great talk, uh, as always. Um, I had a question about the join uh, links where you were exploiting in, in Telegram. Uh, I have a few old ones that I have of interest. Uh, some of them are like ISIS chats where you get invites from t.me slash join chat, etc. Can you still use those nowadays to find newer chats or not? Because I usually put them in very small, very small groups. I'm afraid not. Uh, you can check it manually if your link uh, have a plus in the beginning or a, uh, 5A symbols. Uh, it's something protected. And uh, if uh, the link wa was created after uh, 2017, also it's probably uh, secured from this. Project. Okay, so the, the Google dorking of it will only work with also older links before 2017. Yes. Okay, thank yes. you. Yes. So where is the other questions? Yep, thank you. Hello, thank you for your presentation. I have a question about uh, the anonymization of uh, Telegram users. So is it something realistic or not? Uh, yes. <laughs> um, mostly Telegram users are forgetting to enable settings of privacy for searching by phone number. Uh, so uh, of course, in the case of a very anonymous and uh, paranoid person, uh, you cannot do it with a uh, you know, one one request method, uh, but uh, it's still possible with uh, some uh, other methods. Uh, but uh, for the biggest part of Telegram users database, I think you can do it maybe with a real time uh, resolve uh, or with uh, some historical data. And uh, there are lots of Telegram bots, especially in Russian segment of Telegram, uh, they're containing uh, very big da databases of mapped phone numbers and user IDs. So uh, I can uh, give you some list of uh, these bots if you are interested in. Or you can uh, contact tpos.com uh, founder, he's very kind and <laughs> he will give you some stuff. Other questions? Nope. Well, thank you very much, Aksai. Thank you, guys.